Do you guys like wine coolers? I totally don't like drinking regular beer because it tastes like beer. Yucky poo. Ugh. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to BuzzFeed Bunk. Another series that I'm just playing with, seeing how it goes. And uh, it's basically about tearing apart BuzzFeed articles, because there are so very many articles to tear apart on BuzzFeed. The one that we are going to be looking at today is Japanese 7-Elevens will make you believe in magic again. If you've been, you know. Well, I've been. I spent about four years in Japan, and uh, while the 7-Elevens are cool, this article makes it seem like some sort of fucking magical wonderland that it definitely isn't. It's just a 7-Eleven. Get over it. And, uh, first things first, it's called Seven and I Holdings. You can clearly see that in the picture. It does say 7-Eleven also, but uh, most of the ones that I saw in Japan were called Seven and I Holdings. Which, uh, I guess is the same thing, sort of. Regardless, let us jump into this shit pile head first. If you've ever been to a Japan, to a Japan, good start, <laughs> to Japan, then you know that there's basically a 7-Eleven on every corner. Stop. Uh, if you've been anywhere in the fucking world, you know that there's a 7-Eleven on every corner. That shit is worldwide. You go to the Middle East, you go to Europe, 7-Eleven is international as fuck. So, uh, pointing out that it's on every corner isn't really that much different. Are, are you excited? Are you excited for a McDonald's on every corner? Do you get excited about Japanese McDonald's? I could probably find the BuzzFeed article for Japanese McDonald's if I tried hard enough. <sighs> uh, anyways, we're not talking about your basic ass American 7-Eleven. Wow. Wow, dude. That's, that's pretty edgy. I think the only people who think America sucks have just never been outside America. This is your problem, you see? And then you go to Japan and fetishize their entire culture, when really they're basically normal as shit in most regards, aside from their porn, but that's another story. <laughs> it's Japanese, so it's automatically cool as hell. It kind of, it's, it's a 7-Eleven, are you that impressed by a fucking convenience store? Really? You can, you can find basically everything that is on this list in an American convenience store somewhere. I guarantee you that. Anyhow, on the outside, a Japanese 7-Eleven looks like every other 7-Eleven you've ever been to. But step inside, and it's so much more. Because there's a, a cute Japanese girl behind the counter? Or I don't understand what's going on here. What makes this 7-Eleven better than any other 7-Eleven anywhere else in the world? I don't, I don't completely agree. They got Moshi Balls and weird shit that you probably can't get in America, but that's because they're targeting the clientele. They want their Japanese base to be pleased with the selection of products that they have to offer. If you got a bunch of hamburgers and hot dogs and shit, Japanese people probably ain't gonna buy it because that's not the cuisine that they're used to. Let's start with the ice cream. Just look at this selection. Wow, that that's ice cream. That's definitely something that you can't find uh, in an American 7-Eleven. Eight different flavors of ice cream. Yes, you fucking can. You've got haagen you got Dove Bars, you got Bomb Pops, you got all that shit. Do, do you think Japan comes to America? Japan comes to America. God damn it, I can't even talk today. Do you think Japanese people come to America and fucking marvel over the selection of eight ice cream bars in our 7-Eleven? Probably not. They just take what they fucking want and they go. They go, oh, this looks good. It's a vanilla thing covered in chocolate. I'll, I'll try this one. And then, basically, it, they discover that it's the exact same fucking thing with different packaging. There's no magic there. I hate to ruin it for you. The thing in general about Japanese 7-Elevens is that there's basically an unlimited selection of things you've never tried. If you've never been to Japan. There aren't very many American brands, so literally everything is new. That's basically what I what I said. It's new, but not really. You know what I mean? You've had this shit before, it just didn't have Japanese writing on the packaging. My personal favorite is this one called Coolish. It's basically a juice box, but with ice cream. Very cool-ish. Huh, oh, I see what you did there. That's the name of the product. <laughs> Uh, it looks basically like maybe a lemon ice cream that you squeeze out of a package. So, 
the whole thing here is you don't want to be a lazy shit and get a spoon. That's that's the magic for you, is that you can just squeeze it into your fat retarded mouth? I don't understand. Is it different? Yes. Is it worthy of praise? Probably not. And then look how small it is. You you basically pay a lot for things in Japan. They are no longer in a recession, so American dollars are paying up towards the Japanese yen. Uh, probably not now that Trump is in office, actually. But in the Obama years, when I was over there, uh, you were definitely getting about 80 yen per dollar. I think it's 112 yen per dollar now, which is still a pretty even exchange rate. We're not crushing them quite yet, but you better watch out, Japan. We're coming for you and your fucking squeezy Capri Sun ice cream bar shit. Oh god. Look how cute and tatty this little beef piece of beef jerky is. It's literally the size of a pinky. Um, yeah, they got those little tiny Slim Jims that you can get for a nickel. Have you seen those at the American 7-Elevens? They definitely have them. It's just the, uh, the little panda that gets you, I guess. I don't understand. I don't really get this at all. And the other thing is, uh, it's not like the beef jerky that you're used to. A lot of Asia loves sweet meats, you see? If you're from America, you really like that kick, that spice, well, you're not gonna find it in a Japanese product, I'm sorry to tell you. They really like the, uh, the sweetness of it. And, uh, I also noticed that they didn't have as much of a snap to it. But it's hard to beat Slim Jim in that department. I don't know what they use for that casing, but that shit is delicious. I'll take a Slim Jim over this, uh, Panda Pinky any day of the week. They also sell individual hard-boiled eggs. I know, these aren't your sketchy hard-boiled eggs you buy at a gas station. What? That yolk. That beautiful, perfect yolk. I want to swim in its gooey goodness. You're... You're that impressed by a hard-boiled egg in a box. <laughs> I could make a killing. Are you kidding me? I'll just hard-boil some eggs, put them in a box. Here you go, stupid. <laughs> Buy all you want. You want a 12-pack? Ah, <laughs> oh, they're pre-hard-boiled, so you have to pay more. I don't understand. I also don't understand uh, the gas station. What gas station are you going to that sells fucking hard-boiled eggs? That's a, a really interesting comparison, in my opinion. That egg doesn't even look that good. It looks like undercooked as shit. You like that gooey yolk? I guess different strokes for different folks, but that shit should be way more yellow in my opinion. Do you get like a little packet of salt with it? Or do you have to just choke down this fucking gross, dry, hard-boiled egg that's been sitting in a box for god knows how long? But it's got Japanese writing on it, so it's cool. It's totally cool. Look at all these hard-boiled eggs in boxes that I bought. <laughs> oh god, you can buy liquor there! Wow, totally different from every other 7-Eleven I've ever seen. That's that's just astonishing. Oh, also definitely try the Japanese whiskey. I'll go ahead and back him on this. I'll give him a point for that. Um, the Japanese whiskey is pretty fucking delicious. My favorite brand was Suntory, and really it's uh, Quite tasty and also quite smooth. I would find myself drinking it from the little flask, didn't need a chaser. Of course, I was also basically an alcoholic at that time in the Navy drinking every night, so that probably <laughs> helps the situation along. Um, I basically quit drinking since then. But if I went back to Japan, I, I would get some of that sweet suntory whiskey. It pleases, oh yes. They have beers in a variety of sizes, including teeny and tiny. Uh, so what? <laughs> you wanna, you want a 40 ouncer? Go buy a 40 ouncer. You want a, a tiny beer? Go buy an 8 ounce can. You can buy individual cans in a 7-Eleven. If you want less of that individual can, guess what? Drink less. Give the rest to a homeless guy, I'm sure he'll appreciate it. There's lots of homeless in Japan that I've seen, but at least they're nice. They don't fucking get in your face. That is one of the magical things about Japan. The homeless people are very, very respectful, and uh, I'd be happy to buy them a beer. Asahi? Definitely not a great beer. Uh, I'm... I prefer the, the imports, you know what I mean? Japanese beer is not the greatest thing that I've ever tasted. Except when I was in, um a Korean barbecue restaurant and they had like unlimited refills on the Asahi beer. I think it was 20 bucks and you could eat all the meat you want and drink all the beer you want and eat all the rice you want. And we basically ignored the rice because, you know, 
We're Americans! <laughs> a little bit of rice, maybe, but definitely no refill on that shit. And just uh, cook up all the beef, maybe put some cigarette ash on it because we were pissed drunk at that time and dare each other to eat it. Ah, those were good times. Japan was not a magical place, but the experience itself was magical basically because of who I was there with. I think this BuzzFeed writer is here by herself, so she's got to entertain herself with uh, just walking into a 7-Eleven and going, Oh, look at, look at the hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> what an asshole. Aside from the beer, they also have sake, which really doesn't taste that good. It's a Japanese rice, they call it rice wine, but it's actually closer to a liquor. It goes down pretty smooth for a liquor, all things considered, but if you're comparing it to wine, mm, I, I'm, I'm not a fan. A bottle of wine just doesn't cut it. It's like drinking orange juice. Expecting the vitamin C to hit you right away. <laughs> it don't work. Just this does. I like sochu, which uh, isn't even covered in this article. I think it's from Korea, but they put some sochu, which is... I think it's its own type of rice wine. I just looked it up. It's not from Korea at all. It is uh, indigenous to Japan, and it's not specifically from rice. It can be from barley, potatoes, anything like that. As long as it has an alcohol content less than 45%, it is... Shochu! So, um, yeah, it's pretty delicious stuff. And then, the on top of the drink itself, they pour, like, delicious fruit mixtures, and you can basically buy it on the street corner from, from people in a cart for super cheap. So we'd end up drinking, like, three or four cups, get pissed drunk, walk back on uh, the Navy base, and, and get in trouble for being so drunk. <laughs> Those are good times, boy, let me tell ya. This, this article, at the very least, is helping me to relive some fantastic times that I had in my life. Drinking sake was not one of them. Sake, not sake. Like, you know, a sock puppet. Oh, never mind. But yeah, if you're going to uh, drink a clear liquor, I would suggest shochu. Sochu or shochu? Either one. <laughs> Instead of the sake. Although, uh, people will try and talk you into the sake an awful lot. Especially uh, the warm sake. They, they think you're really manly if you go to a, an izakaya or something like that and order a warm sake. They're going to be like, oh, you're strong man. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Just an alcoholic trying to get a buzz. But uh, izakaya. You guys probably don't know what an izakaya is. Shit. It's not covered in this shitty 7-Eleven article. An izakaya is basically like a pretty cool bar. It's not your conventional bar because the food that they have is actually pretty good, but they do serve a lot of liquor and a lot of finger foods, and uh, we ended up going there quite often because it's one of the cool places to hang out. You could go to a dive bar near the fucking Navy base, but you don't want to eat the food from there. You want to go to an izakaya, have a nice time, don't you, while you're in Japan? Or just go to a 7-Eleven, I guess. I don't know what the fuck. Alcohol juice boxes. Hell yeah! Still want to feel like a kid? Still want to get your buzz on? You can have this shit right here. Similar to the uh, hard-boiled egg in the fucking carton. I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't get it. This is cool because it's in a box. You put alcohol in a box and suddenly somebody's like, Oh my god! I don't have to drink it from a glass like a human? I can fucking feel like a five-year-old. A drunk five-year-old. Five-year-olds are already basically little drunk people anyways. They're always talking, sometimes they fall over, super clumsy. I don't think five-year-olds need this. I don't think anybody needs this, if you want me to be real honest. I'm not interested in your your demon drink, your demon juice. Look at that demon on the front, he's so scary. <laughs> this drink is called Strong, which is basically Sparks, and it'll get you super fucked up. First of all, it's Strong Zero. It says it right on the fucking can, you illiterate asshole. <laughs> Secondly, why Sparks? Is that is that what the cool kids are drinking nowadays? I hate alcohol plus energy drink because usually alcohol it'll just make you pass out. Alcohol plus energy drink is gonna make you walk around while you're blacked out and do a bunch of stupid shit, which is unacceptable in my book, especially knowing my personality. Mm, I'm gonna wake up in jail, <laughs> definitely. So um, 
8% alcohol by volume. It's a little stronger than beer, a little bit weaker than wine. I think beer is like 5 or 6 and wine is usually around 12. Not fantastic. I, I, I would doubt that it even tastes that good. Even if it is Japanese, Japanese have some wonderful drinks. They've got this uh, milky melon drink that I fucking absolutely adored. I wish I could get some. I probably can while I'm in the Philippines. Maybe I'll look up how to order that. Anyways, <laughs> another tangent. But yeah, I don't understand why this focus on alcohol. This is another BuzzFeed writer who's just going to end up alone, not hanging out with any, any, any of her friends, going home from the 7-Eleven with a bag full of beers and just getting drunk with her cats, which are in her t hotel room for some reason. The hotel people didn't even know she was bringing the cats in, but she, she snuck them in there. She's got to have companionship from somewhere, I guess. I don't know. And last but not least, Zima. Absolutely disgusting. What the fuck? Why would you even point this out? Are you, are you excited for the Zima? Yes, the rumors are true. You can still buy Zima in Japan. I don't want to. Do you understand that? Zima is fucking disgusting. I'd so much rather have a beer or wine or liquor or basically anything aside from this foulness. <laughs> Do you guys like wine colors? I totally don't like drinking regular beer because it tastes like beer. Yucky poo. Ugh. I'd rather have a wine cooler! They still have Sima! Lucky us! We'll have to go to Japan to get some Sima! We'll bring it across the border and get arrested! <laughs> Here we go! The non-alcoholic drinks are equally as interesting and new. Somewhat, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can clearly see there's a, a Pepsi there. <laughs> wow, look at that Pepsi! It says Pepsi Special and has Japanese writing. I bet it tastes totally different. Oh, no, wait. Same shit. <laughs> Same shit, different country. Mix the fresca ginger ale with whiskey and you have a fabulous cocktail! I, I told you that I just drink the whiskey straight, didn't I? I don't need to mix it with anything, I'm not a little girl, okay? I, I take my liquor and I enjoy that. That green apple cream soda is probably fucking delicious though. And then they've got the, uh, the milky looking one to the side of it, which probably also has a citrus flavor, flavor to it. One of my favorite drinks while I was there was Pokari Sweat, and they do sell it in the Philippines. There's a lot of Japanese stuff that, that made the short trip over to the Philippines, so I get to enjoy it again. Here we go. They sell a shit ton of Pocky of the skinny and fat variety. Pocky's one of those things that American weeaboos will pick up and be like, This is totally Japanese! Kinda. You can basically buy the same thing in America, it's just the uh, chocolate isn't hardened yet on the stick. You go buy some fucking Dunkaroos? <laughs> Do they sell Dunkaroos anymore? <laughs> ah. But yeah, you, you got some cream in there, you dip a fucking cookie in it, done. Same shit. But, but of course the writing on the box automatically makes this more magical because it, it, I can't understand anything that it says. Aside from, up in, up in the upper right it says glyco because it's gonna give you a glaucoma. <laughs> a glaucoma. <laughs> It will give you glaucoma. And then, uh, Pocky... Pocky MIDI? Musical Instrument Digital Interface. That's what MIDI is. So you can hear a shitty, uh, Jurassic Park cover when you open these up. Which actually would be pretty cool. I'd, I'd pay some money for that. But no. If you open it up, it's just crackers and chocolate. Congratulations, you wasted a hundred yen. Why does it say 12% on it, too? What the fuck? I don't understand anything. <laughs> Is there alcohol in these, too? Get some help. Get some fucking help. The cutest salt shakers you ever did see. Wow. I don't think it's salt. I think it's MSG. <laughs> MSG is so big in Asia. Uh... It got banned because Chinese restaurants and stuff, but Japan, Philippines, still China, I think they're all still using MSG. And it's really not that terrible for you, from what I've heard, <laughs> the, the little bit of research that I've done about it. So, this could be salt, but honestly, why the fuck are you showing me a, a salt shaker? Look at these salt shakers, it's got a panda on it! First of all... It's got some wear and tear on it. I ain't pulling, paying full price for this broke-ass panda salt shaker. You better get that shit out of here. 
Are you just impressed? I think the writer of this article really likes pandas. So anything with a panda, she's like, Squee! Look at this! I need to buy it! Oh, get a dick in ya. <laughs> <laughs> All this to be worked out if you just if you just got a nice hard dick in ya. A good dick down. That's what you need. Not more panda salt shakers. <laughs> Salad dressings that can pass for dildos. This ties directly into what I said before. <laughs> First of all, basically any container can be a dildo if you if you try hard enough. You could use your hairbrush like a normal person, I assume, I don't know. I've never dildoed myself. <laughs> don't buy the salad dressings just because they look like dildos. And a rather thick dildo at that, you're gonna blow your pussy out in no time at all. Ah, who am I kidding, it's already probably there. <laughs> That's why she's so scared of intimacy. That's why she has to write articles for BuzzFeed. I'm sorry for presuming so much about you, article writer. But this is just a, a piece of shit article. I'll tell you that much right now. Makes me want to vomit everywhere. Oh, ketchup in the tube. We got ketchup in the tube. Everybody back up for ketchup in a fucking tube. It's just like a packet of ketchup that you would get at McDonald's, but slightly bigger. Have you never seen those fucking Del Monte things of tomato sauce that you open up when you make fucking spaghetti or something? It's basically that with a little more sugar and shit added into it. I don't understand why you're so impressed by a tube of ketchup. Go to 7-Eleven, take some pictures. Whoa! A tube of ketchup? A salt shaker that looks like a panda? A salad dressing that looks like a dildo? Whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna need you to take it down just a notch. Find me something that's truly impressive. God damn it. Just, just one thing that I would be blown away by, despite having been to Japan before. How about panty vending machines? I was pretty blown away by those. You basically pay five bucks to have, like, a photograph of some chick wearing the panties, and then the panties in the photograph in, like, what looks like... You know those little balls you used to get, uh, sticky hands? Those little capsules, and then you open it up and you take the sticky hand out, except this time there's panties in it. And it's, it's reasonably priced, you know? 500 yen? <laughs> you probably can't talk me into that. But, it's definitely more interesting than ketchup in the tube. That's all I'm saying. And snacks you could only dream existed. Chocolate, salt, caramel, croissant. That does sound pretty fucking amazing. I would like to uh, see it outside of the bag because they look like little little turds or maybe larva maggots on the bag. So I can only assume they look worse once you open the package. And how much of this package is air? You better tell me that first before I purchase this this goods and snacks. All right? And this better not be the only one they got. It actually isn't. They have avocado chips! I don't know why I said that, like, Oprah. <laughs> but then what's this, uh, this white mess that's next to the avocado chips? Avocado cheese. What kind of cheese? I, I don't trust it. I don't like it. I don't trust it. Actually, avocado chips do sound fucking amazing. Uh, if the cheese was identifiable, I probably wouldn't hesitate to put this in my mouth. Thank you, Bethco. You've done a wonderful job. And there's so many other snacks behind it, but basically I think this woman is just picking out things that uh, have some American writing on it just a little bit, instead of taking the true plunge, the true adventure, and just grabbing something off the shelf and being like, what does this taste like? Cheese in a bag, people! Wow, that that's certainly cheese in a bag, isn't it? Amazing. I'm fucking amazed by the cheese in a bag that you have found. <laughs> Why are you showing me this? I don't understand. It's obviously meant to be taken with uh, some alcohol. You got uh, whiskey. That is a nice whiskey highball. It's actually got the ball of ice in it. I like the artistic representation of that. Then you've got uh, some red wine. You've got some sake there next to it. But I don't think you're just supposed to buy the bag of cheese and then eat the cheese from the bag. That's a little weird. I mean, you do eat the cheese from the bag, but you gotta pair it with alcohol, according to the According to the package, which I think uh, I've deciphered a bit more than the woman that took this picture has. And I think she's Japanese too. What's her name? Peggy Wang. <laughs> Peggy Wang. <laughs> you had to have made that up. 
Cheese in a bag! Everybody, cheese in a bag! Hooray! The company's name is also Natori, which, uh, I don't think Peggy Wang knows about Natto. So, you could talk about a lot of interesting Japanese foods, but we just decided to go to a 7-Eleven and pull some shit off the shelf and fart this article out of our ass, I guess. Natto is a fermented bean curd, which is actually quite delicious if you can get it in your mouth, but the smell is just horrible. <laughs> I didn't eat natto for a very long time, and then finally I talked myself into it, and I'm like, This is what I've been missing? What the fuck? I spent two years not eating this! And then I went a little natto crazy. Next picture, next article. God damn it, let's get through this. And this! Candy cheese. It's, it's a cheese candy. Probably reminiscent of cream cheese or something like that. Like I said. Uh, bland, sweet, creamy. That's that's the Japanese palette in a nutshell. You know what I mean? That's why they like sushi. That's why they like uh, soybeans. Things like this. I'm not surprised by cheese candy. I actually did try some cheese candy from the Philippines, but it is certainly different than what they have presented here. So if you want to see that, uh, look up Dayton Does Mr. Queso up in the search bar. But first, wait until the end of this video. I know it's probably a long one, and I do apologize for that, but... There's just so much to shit on! Candy cheese, not impressed. Next! The cup noodle selection will make the average gamer or college student shake! What the fuck? You went all the way to Japan, and you're gonna show me a, a cup of Maru-chan instant noodles? You know, this shit... This shit's imported to America. You can get a ton of it for a dollar. Like, ten packs for a dollar? Some crazy shit? Maybe it's more now. Five packs for a dollar. Regardless, a ridiculous amount. Yes, it does say milk, seafood, uh, but that kind of fits into the cuisine stuff that I was talking about earlier, you know? Americans want a little more kick, a little more spice, that's why you got those, uh, those spicy cup of noodles. But, uh, yeah, milk. Milk seafood doesn't sound so appealing to me. You probably could have picked a better one, uh, to take a picture of. I'm, I'm not gonna approve of this, especially because it's something that is so fucking ubiquitous in the United States. That you went to Japan and you're just like, Oh my god, they have ramen here too? Yeah, they fucking... They... They made it! They're the ones that made it! It's... Uh, how, how can I... How can I spell this out for you? Oh god! It's making me so mad. Okay, fuck this. Next. <laughs> they sell full-on shrooms! Wow, that, that's a drug reference. First we had the... The five pictures of alcohol and two pictures of every fucking thing else. And now we're, we're coming with the drug reference. Look at this! It's a mushroom in a bag! Let's take a picture of it! First of all, that shit don't even look like shrooms, okay? Have you ever taken mushrooms or are you just trying to be fucking hip? Hey, fellow kids! <laughs> what's... What's going on here? Peggy! Help me! I don't understand! Ah, oh, those mushrooms look disgusting as well. I'll take a good old shiitake any day. I see, like, tomatoes in the back there. Are those tomatoes? You, you couldn't have showed me the tomatoes or pomegranates or whatever the fuck and been like, Look! They have pomegranates too! <laughs> wow, that's amazing! I never would have thunk it. I, I've never seen these particular mushrooms in the U.S. before, but then again, I ain't, I ain't like a vegetarian. I don't use mushrooms that often. Unless it's for a pizza, or something like that. But even then, it's like one kind. The little white ones. I don't even know what the fuck they're called. She doesn't even know what the fuck this is called. You could assume that it's Ukiguni Eringi. Eringi. Yeah, oh, that's close enough. <laughs> Sorry for butchering that, I guess. If there are any mushrooms in the... <laughs> mushroom fans in the audience. <laughs> I apologize profusely. Fuck this next one. And look at this mayonnaise! Even the mayonnaise is cute! What makes it cute? The fact that there's a Cupid doll on it? Cupid doll's fucking ubiquitous. You'll pay a shit ton of it, of money for it on eBay, but the, the fucking dolls have been around since like the 1900s or some shit like that. I'm not even joking about that. It's been a hundred years, a hundred plus years since Cupid doll came onto the market. And uh, aside from the, the little picture of a, a cute little baby with some weird hair on it, the bag of mayonnaise looks disgusting. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't want my mayonnaise from a fucking bag. I'll take it from a jar, like a human, 
Sometimes maybe maybe a little squeezable mayonnaise, you know, you're out and about at a picnic lunch, something like that. Put some mayonnaise on your hot dog if you're if you're that kind of person. I am. I love mayonnaise on a hot dog. Put some mayonnaise and some spicy mustard on there. Fuck, man. That's what I'm talking about. Get that ketchup away from me. You give me ketchup, I'm gonna fucking throw it into the woods. <laughs> but anyways, there's there's nothing cute about this mayonnaise. You're you're simply impressed by it because it has a fucking a baby on it. Hooray! 350 grams of mayonnaise for me to squeeze in my mouth. The prepared food section is a whole other adventure. We could buy that mayonnaise and put it on all of this prepared food, which is basically just uh, rice. Uh, assorted noodles, maybe a little bit of sushi, I'm gonna presume. I haven't really had a look at this article aside from the headline, and now I'm just going through the whole thing and riffing. Probably too much. I'm probably giving you guys too much content for this, this shitty of an article, but, uh, this is my legitimate first impression. So, prepared food, not impressed. Soba noodles! Just as predicted, it's fucking noodles in a box. Get a little sauce, you got a little green onion in there. What the fuck do you want? And additionally, the, the fucking picture's upside down, you, you tard. <laughs> it costs 400 yen, um, which yeah, about four bucks for a, a disgusting package of dry noodles. I'm, I'm not going there. I'll, I'll get the, the cup of noodles that I can easily get in America, fill it up with some fucking water, microwave it at the 7-Eleven, and it's basically the same shit. And I save three bucks or something like that. Ridiculous. Absolutely fucking retarded. Next. Packaged meats! Well, they have, uh, sashimi, much as I predicted. Sashimi is just basically sushi, without the rice under it. Uh, and you're paying three bucks for six pieces. You can go to a nice restaurant, sit down, have a little bit of tea, uh, and watch the sushi, the sushi go round. That shit is fucking amazing! They don't even talk about it in this article! It's a giant conveyor belt of sushi, and then you just sit there and take the ones you want and stack your plates up, and then the guy comes and adds it all up at the end. And honestly, um, I mean, you're not gonna get filled up by either one if, if, if you're American. I'll go sit down and put down a thousand yen worth of sushi. Easy. No problem. But, um, yeah. This six pieces, I think it is, for three bucks? Hmm. I, I don't think the math is working out on that. You can get eight pieces for around 500. Uh, and that's sushi, not sashimi. So it comes with rice, you get like some free tea with it, you get to sit down and enjoy a meal instead of just feeling like a fucking pack animal <laughs> sitting on the fucking subway eating your sushi out of a box like a like a monster. Just, um, um, what? Nobody look at me. No, sit down. Act like a human, treat yourself. I think that's been the, the theme of this whole thing. Don't eat at 7-Eleven, go act like a human. Next. And OBS chicken nuggets! Totally OBS! If you didn't know they had chicken nuggets, they definitely do! Which, uh, let's see. Let's see how many pieces you're getting in there for, for about two bucks. I'd say about six? Which actually, that's not a bad price, but it has been sitting under that heater all day. I will fucking rock some chicken nuggets. I'll tell you what right now. I say, give me all three of them packs. <laughs> I'm taking this shit down. Yeah, I think it's cheaper than you could get at a, a McDonald's, which is pretty nice, but... Then there's the the added exchange of having to buy your own ketchup in a tube! <laughs> We've all seen chicken nuggets before. Why are you showing me this again? Much, much similar to the ramen noodles. Please get this shit out of my face. Next. The secret best part of Japane Japanese 7-Eleven. <laughs> I like how they call it Japanese 7-Eleven instead of like 7-Eleven in Japan. No, this is Japanese 7-Eleven. It's way different and way better. There's a refrigerator full of little bottles and remedies. There are multiple ones just for hangovers. I mean, Japanese people do like to fucking drink. They will drink me under the table. I'm like 200 pounds and they're like, whatever. I drink every day, son. I'm like, whoa. There was a point where, where I could uh, put it away, but yeah, not when I first got to Japan, I'll tell you that much. The one with the arrow pointing to it saved my life. Saved your life, did it? I, I don't really care. What an advertisement. It says super on it. You just grab the, again, you just grab the one that had any, any bit of English that I can grab onto. I would pick the uh, vitamin lemon. <laughs> on the left side, bottom one down from the top. 
That's right, vitamin lemon, C1000, for for whatever ails ya. Cold, cold remedies uh, rarely work for me. Hangover remedies, I'd rather just have a, a little hair of the dog, you know what I mean? You got drunk on beer? Just fucking drink a beer in the morning. Who gives a shit, aside from your boss, but he doesn't have to know. <laughs> I wonder if Peggy walks into, like, a, a CVS pharmacy and she's like, Whoa! Look at all the bottles of medication! <laughs> Probably not gonna work any better than just, uh, drinking a glass of water before you go to sleep and a beer when you get up. That's my hangover remedy. Write that down. You're welcome. They don't just sell food at Japanese 7-Elevens, they also sell clothing and home goods! Well, that's because most Japanese people are businessmen. And if you've been drinking the night before, then you you might need a fresh shirt to go to the office. Everybody's gonna look at you and be like, bro, you wore that shit yesterday. You smell like cigarettes and an ass. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations on last night. But, uh, yeah, they probably should have started the article with this instead of, like, a bunch of generic food shit that I've seen before and am not really impressed by. Because this is something that legitimately you would not find in America. So, good job, Peggy. You found something that kind of shocked me a little bit. Sort of. <laughs> I'd also like to add that, in addition, uh, none of the 7-Elevens that I went to in Japan had this. So... You had to go to, like, the Superstore 7-Eleven. You know the fucking Walmart that has everything? You can go in there and get milk and shit? Well, this is the gigantic 7-Eleven that has everything. The ones that are, are littering every street corner, those those are just the generic ones. They've got the mochi balls and the ice cream and shit, but you're not gonna find uh, t-shirts and beard trimmers in there. Definitely, definitely not. So, you did a good job finding this, uh, but I, I feel it would behoove you to mention that it's not in every 7-Eleven. Because what if I need a shirt, and I go in 7-Eleven and say, Do you guys have shirts? And they look at me like I'm fucking crazy. Even crazier than I am, because already I'm American, and a lot of Japanese people get scared. They're like, Holy shit! <laughs> He's gigantic! <laughs> get him out of here! Anyways, the next thing I was looking at, they sell these cool little beard groomers. Well, I think cool is uh, probably being pretty generous there. Maybe it's for your, your beard, maybe it's for your pubes. I guess it's for the beard because it says four men right on it. But thank you Kai Beauty Care for putting three in a pack. That is uh, value for money, let me tell you. And and for only for only two fifty. For only two fifty, you too can have Three beard groomers for all three of your fucking beards. Ah, <laughs> uh, at least this part is a little bit interesting. I'm glad to not be looking at food anymore. Should have done an entire section on this instead of wasting my time with that other... That other garbage that I've fucking seen before a thousand times in every 7-Eleven ever. A selection of face masks that beauty addicts swear by! When she said face mask, I thought she was talking about, like, the surgical masks that people wear. Or people also wear, like, cloth ones with a little mouth on it or something like that to try and look cute. And it is pretty cool. I bought a couple of those since I've been in the Philippines. I think what they're talking about here is, like, a, a beauty mask, you know? Rub it on at night, something like that. Uh, I don't really know anything about that. That is a mystery of Japan that I have yet to explore. I don't think that I will ever end up exploring it because it's very obviously for women. So, um, if you want long, luscious eyelashes from Lululun, then go ahead, pick yourself up a pack of whatever's in this fucking thing and uh, rub it on your face. You know, I think it maybe would have been a, a bit better if you said something besides face mask. Face mask unguent, uh, a, a lotion of sorts. I don't know what a face mask is. I guess you just put it on and then peel it off like those black face mask things that were popular on social media for a while. Maybe. But none of these look like that black face mask thing, so get it away! I don't want it! Ugh! Next! Flashy handkerchiefs! I'll tell you this. Japan loves a fucking handkerchief. Everywhere you go, every guy, every girl has their own personalized uh, handkerchief. I think it's fucking adorable. Mostly it's because it's hot as shit. It's extremely hot and humid, so especially in the summertime, you will be sweating your fucking ass off and wish that you had a washcloth. And Japanese people foresaw this. They're like, oh, I can carry a towel around with me. Oh, I can put my favorite cartoon character on the towel. 
And uh, if you don't want to go looking for your favorite cartoon character, you can get this lovely floral pattern handkerchief for uh, a premium price <laughs> at a 7 and I holding this Japanese 7-Eleven, whatever you want to call it. Personally, um, I'm not that impressed by a handkerchief. I mean, I can go to a 7-Eleven and get a pack of paper towels. <laughs> Is that like the same shit? <laughs> it's comparable. It's comparable. Pocket ashtrays. Yes. This is the wacky Japan shit that I'm talking about, man. Uh, I mean, I've seen this other places. They do have this in America. But most people are very, uh, very loath to put a cigarette butt into their pocket. I'm not one of those people. If I finish smoking, that cigarette butt goes directly into my back pocket. There's no pocket ashtrays. Uh, as for ashing, I just ash on the floor because that shit dissolves within a minute anyways. But, uh, the, the only other thing that Japan likes more than drinking probably is smoking. Everywhere you go, pachinko parlor, uh, there's just fucking 50 or 60 old men sitting in there just smoking up a storm all day every day. <laughs> go there at 3 in the morning and it's the same guy. He's fucking sitting there. <laughs> He's been playing pachinko forever. I wonder how young he was when he walked into this place. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I think that is a really interesting thing that Japanese people don't want to ash. Definitely don't want to leave their butts around. They're much more courteous to others around them than one would expect. Even uh, smoking, no, no smoking areas, you've got like little smoking booths. So they're even courteous to the smokers, which I think is super nice. And if all the ashtrays in the booth are, are taken, you can go ahead. You got your little pocket ashtray you got from 7-Eleven. Really, uh, I probably, probably should have got one of these. I probably would pick one with a cooler color design on it, you know. Captain America, something like that, but they probably ain't got it in Japan. Anyways, this one is actually interesting, so that is three points total for the BuzzFeed writer. We've still got so much more of this shit to go, oh my god. Tell me how I can shorten this. <laughs> Big ol' bags of shampoo! First of all, your thumbnail's yellow as shit, you need to <laughs> have that looked at for just a minute. Uh, 400 milliliters? Yeah, half a liter of shampoo I guess is a good amount of shampoo. I don't know why I'm supposed to be impressed that it's in a bag. I think this lady just really has a thing for bags. <laughs> Look at this ketchup and mayonnaise! And now they got shampoo! I'm gonna put it all in my mouth. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Uh, yeah, I'm not impressed by 7-Eleven brand shampoo. I'm definitely not gonna buy that shit just because it's in a bag. And, uh, especially because it's, it's 7-Eleven brand shampoo. I know what shampoo I want. Whatever my wife buys. <laughs> ah, if I have to pick a favorite shampoo, it's probably Mane and Tail, which is actually meant for horses, but uh, it makes me feel strong like bull, so I use that one, you know? But 7-Eleven uh, brand shampoo, probably not meant for humans. Probably, probably back off of that one. Just, just personal opinion. If you like it because it's in a bag, then you fucking rock all 400 milliliters of it, but ugh, probably not suggested. Next. Hello Kitty Diaries! Wow. They've got notebooks in a 7-Eleven? Color me surprise! I mean, I haven't seen notebooks really in an American 7-Eleven, but any gas station or convenience store will have something that you can write in, at least. Am I supposed to be impressed because it's Hello Kitty? Hello Kitty is one of the most huge brands in Asia. It's competing with Barbie. And, and they're neck and neck, man. Over here in Asia, you ask little girl, you like Barbie or Hello Kitty? She's like, ah, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> and they talk like that because they all smoke too. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, I'm not impressed by Hello Kitty Diary. Uh, I say, hell no, kitty. <laughs> uh, I'll get my coat. <laughs> Next. Adorable boxes of tissues. What the f fuck? I don't think- I don't think they should have sent a woman on this thing, because she didn't take pictures of hardly anything interesting. She's just like, Look, it has a puppy on it! Look, it's shaped like a panda! Wow, that's fucking amazing! It's like, no, it's not. It's called branding, okay? Bow wow. Boku wa bow kimi wa dare. Okay? I don't know what any of that means, but the dog is looking very inquisitive, very intimidating for such a little dog. Uh, he's trying to stare me down, and I don't like that shit. That's a sign of aggression for, for wolves. And maybe dogs. I don't know. 
My dog looks me in the face all the time. I don't mind it so much. But a dog in a box? That's fucking creepy. Look at his lifeless eyes. Just staring into your soul. Ooh, buy the fucking tissues. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy it. I don't like it. Get the fuck out of here. Next. And United States of Benetton condoms. One problem with Japanese condoms is that they're exceedingly tiny. You're gonna squeeze all that blood right out of your wiener and you're gonna be limp as a noodle. That's just how that goes. Uh, pro tip. Just a pro tip, I know they're trying over there, I know they're doing the best that they can, but they gotta make them at least stretchier or something like that. But they do have, uh, like Trojan condoms if you want. I will not be buying any Japanese condoms. Not in this lifetime. Next. Oh. It's over. Thank fuck, it's fucking over. Last but not least, they have free Wi-Fi! Like, basically, every place ever. Wow, this McDonald's has free Wi-Fi! <laughs> oh, Peggy. What a shitty article. Just what I'd expect from BuzzFeed. That's why this has been called BuzzFeed Bunk. What a bunch of trash. Um, we'll probably do some more articles. I'll try to tighten it up a little bit more in the future. Uh, but I really had fun doing this, honestly. I hope I didn't come off as too much of an asshole. Maybe just the right amount. I'm not sure. It's it's hard to judge your own work. So please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. If we get uh, some good response on this video, then I'd be happy to, to dig up another piece of shit article and do some more. There's, there's just millions of articles linked. Look at all of these fucking articles that are that are suggested to me and then you, you they'll, they'll load more it just keeps going for fucking ever and ever that's terrifying to me I don't know what to say <sighs> what I do know is that I've been Brandon Dayton friends your humble narrator like comment subscriptions always appreciated we've got discord links we've got patreon links Twitter links all down in the uh, description box there under the little blurb three paragraphs is what I usually write so go check those out if you are indeed interested in uh, connecting with me further. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Thanks so much for watching BuzzFeed Bunk. And until the next one, bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.